All right, now let's consider this function, which I chose because its values at either end are zero. And so this function is periodic, is continuous in the periodic continuation sense. So the interesting question is, how quickly will its coefficients decay? So let's find out. So let's agree that the series expansion won't have any signs in it because this function is uh, even. And so we will only have the free term and the cosine terms. So let's start with the free term. A sub zero equals one over two pi. Two thirds pi squared. And we have our free term. And I'm just really looking forward when we're done to plugging in zero. And I will get that some multiple of pi squared equals some series. So we'll discover a series for pi squared. So the Basel formula, the famous Basel formula, Euler's first claim to fame, probably when he was 17. I'm not sure how old he was, but that pro that's probably about right, 19. Uh, is waiting for us five minutes from now. Okay, so let's get a sub n. A sub n is one over pi. Is Wolfram alpha ready and loaded? All right, Wolfram alpha has the answer. Okay, but plug in the fact that n is an integer. Over n squared. Okay, and so do you see that coefficients decay as one over n squared? Much faster, still not exponentially, but much faster. So the series is and here's our second series, which thanks to the continuity of the periodic continuation of this function, converges much faster. And the Gibbs phenomenon that I mentioned is diminished. Doesn't go away, but is diminished because the function is continuous. Now as a final step, I want to plug in a crafty value for x. Maybe it won't be zero. So that we get an expression for pi squared as an infinite series. So one possible value is to plug in zero. That will actually give us a, a series for pi squared. It just won't be the Basel formula. But let's see what we get because it's low hanging fruit. So let's pick it, right? So plugging in x equals zero. On the left, we have pi squared, 2 thirds pi squared. So what we have is that 1 third pi squared. Am I right? Does anybody know this formula? I didn't, but it's quite nice. It's an infinite series for pi, for pi squared. That's fantastic, kind of a freebie that comes out of Fourier series. But that's not what I want. What I want is to just have straight sum of inverse squares. I want one, plus one quarter, plus one ninth, plus one sixteenth, not this alternating sum of inverse squares. So I just have to be crafty. What if I plug in pi for x? That'll do it, right? If I'm plugging, oh, that's beautiful. I'm, now I'm going to plug in pi for x. So let's see what happens. Here, zero, minus two thirds pi squared, equals sum, and let's see, we have minus one to the n plus one times minus one to the n. That's minus one, because it's minus one to an odd power. So equals minus one times four over n squared. And there you go, I'm about to cancel the minus and divide both sides by four, and here's what I get the straight sum of inverse squares, the problem that eluded everyone from Newton 
to Bernoulli, everyone, and everybody wanted to know what the answer is. Did not avoid, did not elude Euler. And because Bernoulli and Euler were all from Basel, this is called the Basel problem. And this was, like I said, Euler's first claim to fame. And it really is an amazing formula. Because who would have thought that something so arithmetic would produce pi on the right-hand side? That was so unexpected and was maybe you know, an important instance of different subjects in mathematics coming together. Of course, none of it could compare to Euler's later triumph, which is called Euler's formula, which you studied over the past weekend, which is truly bringing different branches of mathematics together. But this was incredibly unexpected, and it made some waves, deservedly so. All right, that's it. <laughs>